2.6 Balanced Equations, Atom Economies and Percentage Yields Once you know the balanced equation for a chemical reaction, you can calculate the theoretical amount that you should be able to make of any of the products. Most chemical reactions produce two or more products, but often only one of them is required. This means that some of the products will be wasted. In a world of scarce resources, this is obviously not a good idea. One technique that chemists use to as assess a given process is to determine the percentage atom economy. The atom economy of a reaction is found directly from the balanced equation. It is theoretical rather than practical, and it is defined as Percentage atom economy equals mass of the desired product divided by total mass of reactants, the whole thing multiplied by 100. You can see what atom economy means by considering the following real reaction. Chlorine, Cl2, reacts with sodium hydroxide, NaOH, to form, to form sodium chloride, NaCl, water, H2O, and sodium chlorate, NaOCl. Sodium chlorate is used as household bleach. This is a rather useful product. From the equation, you can work out the mass of each reactant and product involved. So, you have 2NaOH, which means you have 2 moles of it, 80 grams, you plus Cl2, which is 1 mole, therefore 71 grams, equals NaCl, again 1 mole, 58.5 grams, plus H2O, 1 mole, 18 grams, plus NaOCl, 1 mole, 74.5 grams. So you have total of 151 grams on one side, and again the same number on the other side. So the Percentage atom economy is equal to the mass of the desired product divided by the total mass of reactants, the whole thing multiplied by 100, as we've already mentioned, which in this case goes as follows. 74.5 grams divided by 151. So 74.5 for the NaOCl, the useful product, and divided by 151 grams for all of the products times 100. So you get 49.3%. Therefore, only 49.3% of the starting, starting materials are included in the desired product. The rest is wasted. It may be easier to see what has happened if you colour the atoms involved. Those coloured in green are included in the final product and those in red are wasted. One atom of sodium, one chlorine, two of hydrogen, and one of oxygen. So, consider the following equation. NaO, these are in green, H in red, plus in red, NaOH plus Cl in green, and another Cl in red, equals NaCl in red, plus H2O in red, plus in green, NaOCl. Another example is the reaction where ethanol breaks down to ethene, the product wanted, and water, which is wasted. C2H5OH equals CH2CH2 plus H2O. So you get 46 grams of reactants equals 29 grams of CH2CH2 with a double bond plus 18 grams of water. So, percentage atom economy is equal to 28 divided by 46, the whole thing multiplied by 100, equals 60.9%. Some reactants, in theory at least, have no wasted atoms. For example, ethene reacts with bromine to form 1,2-dibromoethane. So you get CH2, double bond CH2, which is 28 grams, plus Br2, which is 160 grams, in total 188, equals CH2Br, CH2Br. 
180 grams and it's the only product, so in total 188 grams. Therefore, percentage atom economy equals 188 divided by 28 plus 160. The whole thing times 100, well, 100%. The yield of a reaction is different from the atom economy. The atom economy tells us, in theory, how many atoms must be wasted in a reaction. The yield tells us about how the practical efficiency about the practical efficiency of the process, how much is lost by a the practical process of obtaining of obtaining a product, and b as a result of the reactions that do not go to completion. As you have seen, once you know the balance symbol equation for a chemical reaction, you can calculate the amount of any product that you should be able to get from given amounts of starting materials if the reaction goes to completion. For example, 2Ki, potassium iodide, 2 moles, 332 grams, plus PBNO3, the whole thing too, uh, lead nitrate, 1 mole, 331 grams, equals PBI2, lead, lead iodide, 1 mole, 416 1 grams, plus 2KNO3, potassium nitrate, 2 moles, 202 grams. So starting from 3.32 grams, 2 hundredths of a mole, of potassium iodide in solution and adding 3.31 grams, one, one hundredth mole uh, of lead nitrate is in aqua, sorry, in aqueous solution should produce 4.61 grams, again one hundredth mole, of precipitate of lead iodide, which can be filtered off and dried. However, this is in theory only. When you, when you pour one solution into another, some droplets will be left in the beaker. When you remove the precipitate uh, from the filter's paper, some will be left on the paper. This sort of problem means that in practice you will never get as much product as the equation predicts. Much of the skill of the chemist, both in the laboratory and the industry, lies in minimising these sorts of losses. So, the yield of a re chemical reaction equals the number of moles of a specific of a specific of a specified product divided by the theoretical maximum number of moles of the product, the whole thing times 100 percent. It can, it can equally be well it can equally well be defined as the number of grams of a specific of a specified product obtaining a reaction divided by the th theoretical maximum number of grams of the product, again the whole thing times 100 percent. If you had obtained 4 grams of lead iodide in the above, above reaction, the yield would have been 4 divided by 4.61, the whole thing times 100% equals 86.8%. A further problem arises with reactions that are reversible and do not go to completion. This is not uncommon. One example is the harbour process in which ammonia is made from hydrogen and nitrogen. Here, it is impossible to get a yield of 100% even with the best practical skills. However, chemists can improve the yield by changing the conditions.